Gustav's identity and the questions he's dealing with are very much based, and Ian Bostwich gave a beautiful explanation of the time in which he was living, which is this, this lead up to World War I, a first world war. Now, your epoch, I mean, my epoch was, I mean, we are still in the wake of the Second World War, but for you it's 9-11, the financial crisis, the Arab Spring as the dominating events in your life so far. So my first question is, what kind, what kind of effect had these events, these big events, on your identity, your view of the world um, you live in and, and who you are? It is there. Can you? What, what, what did 9-11 to you? Um, that's a difficult question. Um, How old were you then? I was 16. Okay. I'm giving away my age, but... Mm -hmm. uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Um, like Hans Kastorp, um, sometimes there are moments in life uh, which make you think about things very deeply. And 9-11 um, was a very painful one, I think, for many people in my generation. Um, and it posed a whole series of questions that I had never asked myself and which I didn't feel that I needed to ask myself. Who no. are you? Mm -hmm. um, where do you stand on so many things? That before that, I had just been a British kid in a British school, you know, like all my uh, fellow pupils, and then being thrust into the very sort of duel that we had this morning, mm -hmm. but on a daily basis mm -hmm. of this supposed clash of civilizations, uh, where you have these monolithic blocks and you have to position yourself between, supposedly, uh, you know, between a vision uh, of Islam that was being portrayed by these people, mm -hmm. the extremists and the media, which I did not recognize at all from my upbringing, from the way I lived my faith. And uh, uh, Western uh, civilization in which I felt very comfortable, but where I also felt that there were, that space was being restricted mm -hmm. for having a, a, a multi-layered pluralistic identity. Uh, and so in such uh, situations, you have to either be subjected to these big structures and allow them to define you or you need to take some agency and you need to ask those questions yourself and explore them with others. And so I found that it made me, in a way, strangely more of an active citizen, in a way, it pushed me to go out and dialogue with others and, and to speak with others who are different and to ask myself difficult questions as well and to construct my own version uh, of, of identity, of humanism and faith uh, and to refuse to give in to this idea that you have to choose one or the other. Jesse, you, you were in New York at the time, right? Mm. How do you remember or what? Yeah, um, I was 14, so it was my third day of high school, which is a scary time to be in a new place with new people, a new building and everything. So. Um, but uh, yeah, I went to school in downtown Manhattan, so we heard the plane go over the... Over, I was on the top floor, actually, of my school building, the first class of the day. So we heard the plane go over, and we heard everything and saw everything. And it was... I had already gone through, you know, personal tragedy in my life, but I had never gone through it. Like a neighborhood, community, or national tragedy, so that was my first experience with that. And the first initial thing that sticks out in my memory is just the way that it created immediately so much um, community amongst New Yorkers and amongst my teachers and neighbors and all the students. And there was just such an immediate outpouring of love and support and togetherness in the instant of it, in the day, in the following days that was so hopeful and optimistic and really so beautiful that, I mean, it's terrible that it takes tragedies like that to bring people together, but it was a, a, a really powerful thing to witness at a young age. And, but what followed immediately after that was a real shift in that after that kind of fell away and the, that sort of love and support started to dissipate, then what rose up was so much fear and you know fighting and disagreeing and, and debating and 
a lot of, you know, all the security stuff, and we couldn't get home without a piece of mail with our address and our ID, and people couldn't come to each other's houses. And, um, but also, like you were saying about the questions, because suddenly we were only 14, we were just kids in school, but now we were debating and fighting and arguing about something that was actually real. I was very naive when I was a teenager, and uh, 9-11, the economical crisis, was a kind of wake-up for me, because uh, I, was, I grew up with the promise, everything will be better, every day better and better and better for you, because uh, your parents, uh, my parents, and everyone, I think, uh, in Western in Europe, uh, after the Second World War, Uh, and thanks to economic boom, um, believed in. And the only faith was the progress, was the capitalism. Uh, my grandfather was uh, um, so poor without shoes, and my father, like so many father and mother in Europe, were the first uh, not only to have the, uh, the opportunity to buy shoes, but to pay the studies for their children. And I was one of the children, and the first generation who uh, had the opportunity to go to university, and not like today, choose whatever you want. Oh, do you like ancient Greek? Do you like music? Do you like, of course you can do it. This is the system, believe in it. And then one day, someone said, we were wrong, sorry. <laughs> um, so you, now you need to change yourself, change your mindset. No, don't believe anymore. But that was, at that time, progress uh, was a fate. It's like uh, talking about religion to mm -hmm. tell someone, don't believe anymore in your God. <laughs> 